Welcome, and not just to you, but to a new colleague who joins Crowmatch tonight, Fiona Bruce. Since Jill's death, we've all been determined that we would take our time, that instead of trying to find someone who could fill Jill's shoes, which is impossible, we look for someone who could be themselves on Crime Watch, and here she is, Fiona. Thanks, Nick. I'm very aware that I'm following on from someone who has a special place in this programme and who made a tremendous contribution to fighting crime. I'm certainly going to do my best. It's a great programme, and what makes it work is you, the fact that you care enough to try to help. Tonight, with new evidence, you might be able to unravel the oldest murder Crime Watch has ever tackled. It happened 22 years ago. In fact, we start with a case that goes back almost 10 years, and it's one of the largest police inquiries of its sort running now, Operation Eagle. For nearly a decade, Bath has suffered a series of attacks on women, usually women who were just getting into or out of a car, and were then abducted and raped. At least 11 attacks, maybe more, seem to be linked, and tonight we hope that you'll spot some small detail that will identify the culprit. You're just in the wrong place, the wrong time. The fact that he held something at my throat was enough for me to do as I was told. I was too concerned that he would cut my throat. Well, help was down the end of the garden, but I couldn't get to it and they didn't know what was going on. The first attack we know about was southwest of the city centre, quite separate from the rapes that happened later. This is nine years ago off a street in Southdown. I work a night shift. I'd left work early because I was feeling ill. And I was just parking the car in the garage to go down my back garden path home. I just thought it was some sort of wild practical joke, first of all. Then in my naivety, I thought he was trying to mug me, take my checkbook and money and what have you. And then I realised that wasn't what he was after. Oh, shit! He threw me down on the ground by the garage and started to rip my clothes and then he heard the noise which still to this day I think it was a cat and then he decided to bundle me in the car and drive off. It seems an odd place to launch a sex attack 2am on a deserted track at the back of houses. Maybe the man was a burglar and this was opportunist. Either way he knew the area well he drove his victim a short way out into the country to Coombe Hay Lane at the start of the Cotswold Way. This was the start of a pattern, ambushing women, driving them in their own cars, ripping the crotch of their tights, raping them, then getting them dressed and driving them home. Five months later, the second known attack. Come this way quickly, be quiet. This time, he was closer to the city centre, and in this case, he ambushed a pedestrian. But again, there was his fetish with tights. When he found his victim wasn't wearing them, he produced a pair himself. Put these on. Be careful, don't rip them. His need was for him to rip the tights himself. Then nothing for three years. Was he in prison? Did he attack other victims who didn't go to the police? Start the car. Start the car! Late in 1994, he ambushed a woman as she parked her car in Bathwick, not far from the last known attack. He drove her in her car close to the university into the grounds of the American Museum. As with the first known attack, he took the woman home. Stay in the car for five minutes and don't call the police or I'll burn your house down. Does he come back to retrieve his own car or how else does he get home? Then another gap, almost two years. I won't hurt you. I haven't hurt you so far, have I? This time he's in Bristol, quite close to Bath, and he's ambushed a driver at 3 a.m. What was he doing in Kingswood? Visiting to burgle, visiting friends, or was he staying here? He drove his victim's car straight to Mangotsfield and Carson's Copse. He seemed to know the way, but not the way back. I'm going to lift your blindfold now. I want you to tell me where we are. Tell me how to get back to your house. And don't look at me. Here in Bristol is the only time the man gets lost. And he left behind another clue. The blindfold, a pink elasticated headband. Had he borrowed it, and perhaps the tights, from you? A month later and back in Bath, not far from the previous ambushes, it's an area where commuters leave their cars. 
and from now on his attacks are in early evening. But this time his intended victim locked the door. He made off, but half an hour later... Let me have your money. Have you got a birth certificate or driving license? He often asks for money, but each time the motive is rape. On this occasion, his victim was only 16. But he seems to be opportunist, any age, any type of woman. Three months on and three more attacks, though in each case his victims got away unscathed. Then, two years before the next offence. Again, had he been in prison, in a new relationship, or did victims not go to the police? Take your safety bells off. Don't move or smash your face. The rapist ran, but left behind a clue, a sun-faded baseball cap with the logo Batman Forever. 20 minutes later, and not far away. I'd already rung to say that I was coming home because I had a, a mortgage advisor coming to the house. If I've got an appointment, I'm there. Not, not one minute late, I'm on time. It was just a matter of seconds. There was no way that even if I'd had a mobile phone that I could have rung anybody to save myself. About once a week, my wife would pull up and then realise she'd forgotten to post the letters. She'd be there for a moment and then drive off, just like that night. Are she going to kill me? Shut up. My head was working, but my body was floppy, as if it didn't belong to me. I had to try and remember everything. The guy had, I would say, a, a quite a normal physique. He wasn't fat, and he certainly wasn't skinny or bony. He wasn't a hairy guy. Even though my head was squashed on his thigh, I couldn't smell washing powder or sweat. Really strange, someone who was very well scrubbed. My car is really old, it does stall, and I couldn't get over how he drove the car as if he'd driven a Mini always. Having taken his victim past Moncton Coombe School, he changed his mind and turned around, now heading back into the country. After 15 minutes, he arrived back at the far side of the school. It's a remote spot often used by lovers, but in this case, it was rape. And the car did stop. He put a blindfold over my eyes. I couldn't see anything. I couldn't see down to see my toes. I didn't know what was going on. I was so scared, so frightened. Um, even when it was all happening, it's still the thought of, am I going to get away? I had a watch on, and because the interior light didn't work, he used my lighter to look at my watch. That's, I thought he was going to set fire to me because I could feel the heat, and I could hear him flicking my lighter. After the assault, he took a tiny road that even many locals barely know. Who do you know who's so familiar with Moncton Coombe? As with the other attacks, the woman was taken home. And I'm not going to let him change me and push me into a corner. Bastard. Bill, you've so slight a description of this man. Who can help and how? Although we've a vague description of this offender, we know he's white, five foot eight to five foot ten. He's approximately 30 years of age. What we do know is about his sexual behavior. We know about his fetish for tights, the fact that he needs to rip the crotch 